What is the solution to this affordable housing crisis we're in? Mobile home park investing. And this is why. Inflation is rapidly increasing and the prices of everything from food to gas to housing are skyrocketing. Young people are getting out of school and they're going home and living with their parents. People are stuck living in expensive apartments and inventory is super low. It's very competitive if you actually can afford it. Everyone's complaining that housing prices are just unaffordable. Manufactured home communities, also known as mobile home parks, can offer the solutions to this problem, but until recently, they've really been ignored. And there's various reasons for that. They've been ignored because frankly, they can be ugly. Also, they have kind of a bad stigma. Some people think that they're, you know, unsafe, high crime, trashy. Um, people think that they're not safe in bad storms. And so there's various reasons and stigmas that people are negative towards them. Another reason they've been ignored as a solution to affordable housing crisis is because it's hard to get zoning to develop new ones for the reasons that we already talked about but also they don't generate as much tax revenue for the local government, and so they're not in a rush to allow more of them. Another really simple reason is they're not on people's radar. There's only 6.8 million mobile homes in the entire country, where for apartments, there's over 21 million apartment units. But why is mobile home park investing the answer to the affordable housing crisis? Well, I'm about to tell you. But first, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, do it now. And if you like what I'm going over here, do me a favor, click the like button, I'd really appreciate it. All right, so here's why. Since the mobile home park industry has been consolidating over the last few years, a lot of professional operators and investors have been coming in and buying up these communities with low occupancy, and they've been filling them up with new homes so that people in that area are able to come in and buy affordable housing. And this has really helped in a lot of areas that needed it the most. The great thing is there's a lot more communities that have low occupancy that we can buy and do the same thing for. Just filling the existing parks would help a little bit in these markets that need it and you wouldn't even necessarily have to build anything to do it. It's a lot faster to go and fill up an existing community with brand new mobile homes than it is to go build stick built or block built homes in a traditional development. And now think about how beneficial it would be to go and develop a bunch of mobile home parks and that would really expedite bringing new inventory online for people who need affordable housing and want home ownership. So there's several reasons why manufactured homes make a lot of sense over stick built or block built homes. One of those reasons is kind of obvious, but they're really affordable. You know, if you look at it this way, the lot rent in a community is typically about half the cost of a one bedroom apartment. When you take the mortgage for a brand new home, if somebody needs one and you combine that with the lot rent, you're still coming out less than the rent in a one bedroom apartment typically. Manufactured homes also allow people to get into home ownership that maybe couldn't before with those other traditional home types, be just purely because of cost. Manufactured homes are fairly fast to bring in, like what we talked about. It can be a few months and you've got brand new homes showing up at a community. You can also bring in multiple homes at once versus having to individually build them on site. Financing for manufactured homes is actually pretty good. And what's great about it is it's usually income-based financing and a little bit less strict than maybe your local bank or mortgage company on a single family home. This allows people who need to get some mortgage history going the chance to do that and it's pretty flexible. One thing that people kind of forget is that when you live in an apartment or a townhome, you've got shared walls and you don't have a lot of space to move around. So what's great about manufactured homes is it allows families who want that privacy and they want the space to have it. They can drive right up, park their vehicle right next to their front door, bring their groceries in. They don't have to worry about people banging on the walls next to them or above them. And it's just a much better quality of life, in my opinion, for most people. Something that a lot of people don't know about manufactured home communities is that they've got this real community vibe going on a lot of times where remember when we were kids and you used to go outside and play in the yard or play in the woods all day and come in for dinner and everybody knew each other and the families would get together on the weekends or for holidays and do kind of like block parties and things like that. You see that a lot in these communities. And so it builds a very tight knit long-term community and people enjoy that because they can't find that in most other places. 
Another reason why manufactured housing is a great option is like we've talked about, there's a lot of new operators coming into the market and they're reinvesting and revitalizing these long lost communities that had a lot of deferred maintenance and they're bringing them back and making them really nice places to live again. There are some challenges with utilizing manufactured home communities to solve the affordable housing crisis. One of the biggest problems, believe it or not, is government. Government is typically pretty hard on manufactured home communities because they don't want them there for reasons we talked about. And they make it very hard to develop new communities and get the zoning to do it. Typically getting new homes from a manufacturer is between 30 and 90 days. But due to COVID, there were massive delays and a big pent up demand for homes. And so it was taking anywhere from six to 12 to 18 months to get homes off the line and delivered to your community. Now, in October of 2022, when I'm recording this, uh, that, that, that pent up demand is decreasing and you can start to see manufacturers getting a little bit more in line with where they used to be. I'm starting to get quotes in the 90 day range, which is great. It is important to recognize that you're not in control of the timelines of those homes being delivered. So if you're buying a community that you need to bring in a lot of homes, you need to be really conservative on the timelines because there could be delays that you can't change. Like any inflationary situation, cost of materials and labor is pretty high right now, and it continues to get worse. Now, that being said, the cost of the homes and the labor and the materials are still much more affordable than a single family stick built home. So it's all relative, but the costs have been going up. Now we talked about how attractive the financing can be for buyers of manufactured homes. But I will tell you that there are less lenders in the marketplace willing to finance chattel or manufactured homes than let's say your normal single family stick built home. And one of the main reasons is because the government or quasi government, Fannie and Freddie, does not back chattel loans yet. So hopefully we see more lenders get into the space and give more financing and more competitive financing options for our buyers. Many people are also talking about ADUs, additional dwelling units, as a potential solution to the affordable housing crisis. And I believe that they can help on a small scale. Even more are talking about developing tiny home communities or variations of them. And because they're cute, they typically get more attention. But tiny homes are usually a lot smaller, more expensive, and they're not built to HUD rated standards. And so they're really supposed to be temporary housing and not built for permanent residency. You could buy double the home by just buying a manufactured home and paying the same price for it. Manufactured homes are usually built better than the tiny homes as well, based on those standards that we talked about, but they're not as sexy, I guess. Overall, I think tiny homes and ADUs are cool and they're a great little niche for certain people, but for a lot of the population, and especially families with kids and stuff, they're, they're just not realistic for a family to live in long-term. I should mention that there is some new legislation being considered by Congress and the White House to reduce the cost of housing. And in there, it talks a lot about manufactured housing as part of the solution. The truth is, even if it does pass, it's probably not gonna solve the problem, and it might even make things worse, like government typically does. Um, that being said, it is really great because manufactured housing is getting recognized as a solution on a much larger scale right now. So what's gonna come from this affordable housing crisis and when is it going to end? Nobody knows, but what we can do to help it is we can go out and buy communities that have room to improve them and offer more affordable housing options in markets that really need it. Or we can go out and develop new communities when that process, when new development, becomes feasible. Be sure to connect with me on all the socials. And if you have a mobile home park that you're buying and you want to partner up, go to mariodatillo.net to do that. I'm always looking to partner with great people and buy great assets together.